Hey everyone, a lot of people probably know that I'm primarily a jungler, but just like Hector, I love to play Phil, and I've had tons of experience coaching, playing, and climbing on all roles. To prove that, I made sure to hit at minimum masters on all roles at least once. I even won a $6,000 challenger tournament playing support one time. My ADC might have been TL Yawn before people found out he was an absolute monster and went pro, but I digress. Needless to say, I have a lot of hours in every lane. That on top of coaching my fair share of teams and talking to lots of challenger players in all roles, I've gotten a good feeling for what the main mistakes are in every lane that just seem to pop up in every coaching session. Support has plenty, and I'll be proving that these mistakes are super common by using your replays. Thanks so much for everyone that volunteered to be flamed, and let's jump right into it. Our first example comes from Mez X, who's playing Lux into Thresh. Caster and Enchanter supports get a bad rep for being super passive. And honestly, it's really true. This is probably one of the most stereotypically support problems. It's not so much that they don't try to actively capitalize on opportunities, but these champs don't require aggression to win, and so it tends to be one of the last skills that's learned from players that play them. We know a few things in this situation. One, that Nidalee started red and is probably pathing up, and two, that we have a huge wave advantage built up. Both of these things are signals that we can go absolutely nuts in this lane with trading, and we'll see how it plays out. Mezex hits his Q, and right after, he backs up. This is definitely because he doesn't have cooldowns right now, but this is still way too far. Even without cooldowns, we should be perfectly willing to stand by Ezreal here and go for autos on Thresh. Not only are we extremely likely to just win the trade outright because of minions alone, we need to think about what advantages we already have in the lane. Nidalee won't be here, and we're getting the push. We definitely don't want to let them just get rid of our wave advantage because we're standing super far back. But this also means that every point of our health is not equal to every point of health from the enemy. So what exactly do I mean by that? We should think of health as a resource, just like mana, gold, summoner spells, cooldowns, or even time, almost anything in League can be spent and used to accomplish something. For example, if you're late game missing Flash on Annie versus a missing Flash on Kassadin, they're not equal. Even though Flash is the same cooldown for both, barring boot and rune choices, and it's the same summoner spell, one champion just needs it more than the other. Here, Thresh and Urgot just need their HP more. Why do you think that is? This might not be super easily apparent, but it's a combination of multiple things. One, our jungler is starting topside, so it's likely that they can come bottom, and since we know Nidalee is going top, that makes it a really easy 3v2 for us. We can super easily simplify this by just saying that if both bot lanes have 200 HP overall, and a full HP grave shows up, we now have 5 times more total HP than them on our side. The more total HP they keep, the less terrible that ratio is going to be. If everyone has 800 HP and grave shows up, it's only a 1.5 times difference. Every point of HP that they lose is drastically more important than ours. Additionally, Lux and Ezreal have the wave push, and if you know anything about recall timings, when you have control of the wave, you can get the better recall. This means that they could use all of their HP as a resource, trading like crazy, only to just base, heal up, and come back. Then they'd be at full, and the enemy would be stuck at low HP, either forced to lane without much health, or take a bad base timing. There are plenty of times where supports have expendable resources and just choose not to use them. They would win any trade hard here, and even if they only went even, Lux's health just doesn't matter as much. This passive playstyle and unwillingness to trade HP leads to just not winning a lot of lanes. It's not that challenger players just get free damage off, they don't. They just know when their resources are worth less than the enemies and trade then. If Lux was a little further up and in a much more aggressive mindset, this is probably a kill right now. There's a free Q lined up with level 2 coming right away but she just doesn't bother. It's not that this loses you the lane, let's make that clear, but you're missing opportunities to win, and that's how you carry. It's definitely a hard mistake to notice, and you probably don't think you're guilty of it. But if you aren't Challenger, which I assume is everyone watching this, I assure you that you are too passive when you can be punishing much harder. Lux really refused to take any damage at all during this lane, and it's probably pretty important to just remind everyone that dying, taking damage, and all sorts of other things aren't necessarily always bad. In fact, it can be quite the opposite. Let's get into another replay. This one comes from Sir Brainy. 
Alright, so in a similar way to players not knowing how to push their advantages, we have the opposite end of the spectrum, where when players are at a disadvantage, they don't know how to cut their losses. This lane phase was a total scrap fest, which I do love to watch, but at a certain point you have to be able to have the foresight to predict how it will continue to play out. If we pause here, we can see that everyone in bot lane has pretty much no resources. Leona in particular doesn't even have enough mana to E right now, and has no sums, so she isn't particularly useful. If we continue playing this lane out as is, I think we can agree that it's pretty much a coin flip on who comes out on top. While the payoff for killing the enemy bot lane here would be high, the risk of getting frozen on after dying would completely remove us from the game. Consistency is everything when it comes to climbing, and it's really early on in the game. There's no reason to just put everything on the line right now when our lane and the game is still in a fine state. It may feel like you have to try and crash the wave here, but we really have better options. Ideally, we just ping our jungler to immediately come and help crash the wave for us. We don't even need kills here, we just want the wave to go into tower so we can base and then not have the super coin flip play. Obviously, I know this is solo queue, and your jungler might have just muted all before the game, or maybe their cat's on fire, I don't know. If for whatever reason they don't come bot, you need to just accept your losses here. You're risking too much without good odds. It's basically like YOLOing all your money on red at the casino, and if it doesn't work, then you go homeless. It's just not the same as just betting $20 that you can afford to lose. This play 100% ruins your game if it doesn't work out, and we really have to think about risk tolerance when considering plays. There are going to be times where you bet and lose that 20 bucks, but you have to be okay with it. If Shivana doesn't come, we should probably just recall and accept that we're going down a couple minions. Honestly, it can even turn a losing situation into a winning one. If the enemy doesn't know the correct response to your recall, they might find themselves stuck in lane against full HP opponents, like if they tried to freeze for example. Or they might try pushing the wave and not quite get it to crash, letting us freeze on them instead, or even get kills. In these different scenarios, you can actually come out ahead just by having the initiative to take the quote unquote bad recall. Worst case, the enemy plays it correctly and you go down a few minions, but that sure as hell beats getting double killed and frozen on all for losing a coin flip. If the game were in a much more dire state, then sure, this makes sense, but you'd probably lose the game anyways and then you're not risking anything, but potentially throwing a perfectly winnable game over a few minions is not it. Alright, this last clip comes from TTZ 2012. The second I see a Blitzcrank picked and anything lower than Masters, I instantly know they're going to invade every time. Pretty much every player who plays Hook Champions does it. The higher up you go, the worse this is going to be. Not only do players learn how to 5 point and do it more consistently at higher ranks, everyone expects it from these champions, so it gets less and less free and more likely to fail. Regardless, you get punished much harder for blowing things like Flash and Ignite before the lane. And your jungler can also get absolutely screwed if you invade, giving the enemy team a chance to ward up or even take your opposite side jungle. This first hook that you look for is totally fine. If you miss, literally nothing happens, you just don't get anything, and that's perfect. This is the only kind of invade I like at all, where the risk of losing the game immediately is essentially zero. What I really hate is when people just face check into bushes that should have wards or people in them, so at least you didn't do that. However, what happens afterwards is my issue. The second the hook is missed, you need to spam ping that this whole idea is over. Once they know where you are, the play is dead. Don't just continue the invade afterwards, you don't have information here and they actually do have some on you, so it's not a fair playing field. We just mentioned risk tolerance in the last example and this is another time when you're risking losing the game in a perfectly winnable state for no reason. We just skipped over 2 kills to Yasuo and happened to coin flip one back, but this is about as RNG as you can make a game and removes so much playmaking potential for us in the lane phase now that we don't have ignite or flash, and that's when kills really do matter. Again, if you think that you're a better player than your elo, you want consistency in your games. You don't want random people having 2 kills for no reason. Even is good, because even means your skill becomes the difference. Invades as a whole are a way of skewing the game at the start, but without proper communication and planning, they aren't high enough likelihood to actually do anything positive. Most of the time it's just a 50-50 on who benefits. In solo queue it's never a good idea to rely on this to win games anyways, even if it does work sometimes. So I guess what I'm saying is just don't invade. The best thing you can do is 5 point and try to reduce variance, and rely on your better play to win the game through the consistent tactics like wave management, roam timings, recall timings, etc. 
Feel free to look for the random hooks over terrain, but the walking all the way into unwarded jungle thing needs to stop. It's a plague in solo queue. Anyways, that is by far the top three most common mistakes I see from support players. Hopefully you'll find yourself fixing these issues before you know it, or maybe you weren't even making them at all in the first place. Regardless, we hope you learned something. Remember, if you want to improve fast and get the rank you've always wanted, then check out skillcap.com. It's the only service that offers an improvement guarantee. If you don't climb at least five divisions while actively using Skillcapped, you can claim a refund. Check us out, link in the description below. We here at Skillcapped want to thank you for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.